Hello everyone. Recently in the cabinet committee, the Union Cabinet Committee on Economic, uh, the Union cabinet, cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, they have approved the construction of the interstate transmission system in the Union territory of Ladakh. Now this initiative has been taken under the phase two of the Green Energy Corridor Initiative of Government of India. Now this initiative was started earlier in the year 2015 and now we have entered into the phase two of this Green Energy Corridor. Now the unique feature of this particular project that is going to be implemented in Ladakh is going to be that because of the difficult terrain and hostile conditions, Power Grid Corporation of India has been entrusted as the implementing agency of this project. And secondly, we are going to see a development of high voltage direct current transmission lines in this region. The high voltage direct current transmission lines are expected to reduce the transmission losses. Remember at high voltage, the direct current happens to show a much lower you know, transmission losses compared to alternating current. And then on top of that, this project will also help connecting Ladakh's, this particular, you know, uh, renewable energy grid of Ladakh with that of the rest of National Grid. Now, National Grid was completed in the year 2012, which connected all the various power generation grid systems in, the, in India and to help those states which have a power deficit with those states which have a power excess. So energy from a power excess state can be transferred to a power deficit state. And this has been the news when it comes to the phase two of green energy corridor. Now, the point here is, why are we discussing this? What is the point of knowing green energy corridor? See, as I take this class today, as I, as I'm recording this lecture today, the air pollution standards in Delhi are close to severe. In fact, they are more than severe air quality in various parts of Delhi. In fact, across North India, the air quality standards have been hovering around poor, very poor and severe. So the context of taking this particular video is very clear. When you talk about air pollution, it is directly correlated with the amount of fossil fuel that we are burning. Of course, there are other issues as well, like agriculture stubble burning and the overall, you know, uh, the mismanagement of waste and such. But primarily, in fact, the Supreme Court Expert Committee has also discovered that most of the air pollution is caused due to fossil fuel burning, which is contributing 55% of our power generation and almost 90% of our entire vehicular emissions. So it is very clear that burning of fossil fuels directly correlates with air pollution and renewable energy comes out as the only solution. It comes out as the only possible solution when you talk about finding a means of sustainable energy security. Now, United Nations have also taken initiatives in this direction. I'll just quote one of those initiatives, although there have been many, but I want to quote Sustainable Development Go Goals here. It is a set of 17 develop Sustainable Development Goals, which was taken in the year 2015, and they were supposed to be achieved by the end of 2030, giving a 15-year time span period. Now, out of these 17 Sustainable Development Goals, goal number seven is somewhat related to our discussion here. Goal number seven talks about clean and affordable energy. Now, Green Energy Corridor Initiative of India is India's answer to this particular goal where we have taken an initiative to promote more and more distribution of renewable energy across the country. Now, <clears throat> it also becomes a very natural you know, step that any responsible developing economy would take, any responsible large economy would take particularly. right? Although United Nations, most of the reports have been citing that most of the developed countries, most of the growing countries are going to be going, going, are not going to be achieving the 17 sustainable development goals. Many of them will be lose, losing it from a very large margin. But the Green Energy Corridor Initiative of India happens to be a landmark initiative to help guide all the growing economies that what is the right way of growth. Now, talking further about the Green Energy Corridor Initiative, as I said, it was started in the year 2015. Its objective has been very clear. It is a very natural step from the national grid because the national grid that was completed in 2012 and 2013, we did not have much share of renewable energy at that time. But since the year 2015 onwards, our share of renewable energy has been growing significantly. 
our growth of renewable energy has been very commendable among the developing world. So it is clear that we have to keep expanding the sphere of connectivity of renewable energy with the rest of the world. In fact, you guys, guys must have noticed quite recently we have concluded the sixth annual, uh, sixth assembly meeting of the International Solar Alliance, where again the Green Grid Initiative, the Oso Vogue Initiative, has been very largely explained, very largely discussed. Now, coming back to the Green Energy Corridor, the Green Energy Corridor of India has been implemented in two phases, where the phase one has an objective of, of connecting all the energy, renewable energy rich states including the states like Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka. These states, Maharashtra, these states are expected to connect the renewable energy grid with the rest of the country and it was further going to extend up till the phase two. The phase one of uh, this initiative was supposed to be completed by December 2022, but because of issues related to forest clearances, issues related to land acquisition, Government of India has extended its deadline to December 2023, this year, December 2023. And it has been partly funded by the KFW Developmental Bank of Germany. So it, there is also, you know, a kind of an international relation dimension to it. Now, talking further about the phase one, phase one is basically meant with an objective to promote reliability, to promote sustenance, and also to promote you know, energy security, renewable energy security for the country. Moving on to phase two, which has now started last year, government, last year, the union cabinet already approved the phase two. And now the implementation work for phase two is expected to start. Phase two, more or less, more or less have the same objective. But adding on to this objective, they also have an aim of integrating 20 gigawatts of renewable energy with the rest of the country. Now, looking at the phase one and two, if they are achieved, if, if they are achieved in the set duration, the phase two is expected, by the way, to be completed in the next five years, right? On papers, it still says by the year 2027, but somewhere by 2030, if you are able to add 450 gigawatts of renewable energy, connected renewable install, renewable energy of installed capacity equal to 450 gigawatts, then this would be a very big achievement for a country like India. In fact, when you look at the Panchamrit commitments of India, which India has made in the year 2021, we have an objective of adding 500 gigawatts of renewable energy installed capacity by the, by the year 2030. Now, if this green energy corridor is completed, then it is also going to help us achieve, you know, an, a, an objective of sustainable development goals number seven, promoting clean and affordable energy. It is also expected to promote more and more employment opportunities, especially in the so-called green collar jobs. Green collar jobs happens to be those jobs which are involved in the area of environment, environment sustenance, or so what is known as geo or climate engineering. It is also expected to add on further into India's capacity of, ex of exporting renewable energy. In fact, there is a proposal of connecting India's national grid with that of Sri Lanka with a high voltage DC current in order to provide them a reliable source of energy from India's from, from uh, under, under this uh, recent initiative of BIMSTEC. So these are the various pointers that I believe from green energy corridors can be considered that one can write in the UPSC answers and also in general to understand the importance of renewable energy. This becomes a very important topic to know and also to realize in what direction India is in India's development journey is paved off and also to understand how renewable energy can be the only backup source that we have around us when it comes to climate change, sustainable development and mitigating global warming. Thank you.